Okay, today we're looking at a prayer of guidance. I thought I would share a statement from Emma Curtis Hopkins. I think it's from her. She doesn't give any attribution to anyone else, so I think it comes from her, from the book High Mysticism. It's one I latched onto many years ago, and Beth did an embroidery uh, statement of it that I have on my desk at home. But it says, He who hath led me to this way, still on the way will show. He who hath taught me of this way, still more will make me know. And to me it's kind of self-evident why a statement like this would, would be so appealing. She speaks of God in a masculine sense, which is, was common in that day in her, her life period, as it is in ours, still used a lot, but we don't want to think of it, of God as a man. Just think of the creative process, the creative life force that's working through us. It led us to the way we're on, and the way is the spiritual awakening, the spiritual understanding that we've come to that has prompted us to think differently, to see things differently, to consider other options, to look a little more deeply into why we believe what we believe, why we've come to these these ideas, why we came to them in the past, what caused us, what prompted us to accept the, the worldview that we did. And I think most of us will find that there was some reason, some motivation, we weren't necessarily naturally drawn to, to our uh, mainstream teaching, that we were born into it or was provided to us in some way that we didn't question at the time because it was the, the way. But during even times like these, when we're going through something that we won't necessarily eternally adopt, that we'll grow out of it at some point, there's this guidance that is always there, that is always questioning. I remember questioning the teachings that I was given. I didn't know how to question them. So the only way I could question them was talk to the minister that was, uh, or the minister of the church I was attending at the time as a kid. And most of the responses that he would give me is that you just have to accept it in faith. Or you'll know the answers in the great by and by or something like that. It uh, wasn't real satisfying, but you just had to accept that that was true. Because who could you ask? Where would you go? If the authority doesn't give you the answer, or some answer that's satisfying, then... But the, the real question is, why would we question it? What in us would rise up and say, I wonder if this is true? Or I wonder where this came from? I wonder why people believe this? And so that's that mystical awakening, that spiritual unfolding that is happening in all of us, even when we're not aware of it. And if we're in a place in our life right now where we're completely confused or we don't know where to turn next, we don't know what uh, the next, what life holds for us around that next corner, it's important to be able to relax and know that that which has brought us here, continues to carry us on. And that which caused us to question, that which taught us of the way we're on is still actively teaching us. But we get pretty involved in appearances and we have reactions to it and we get, that becomes our reality. And so we try to solve the problems of the reaction that we're having and the greatest way or the best way to solve 
a reaction is to let go, is to take time to be still and let your mind go. Let yourself go and know that something greater is unfolding. So this statement has always helped me do that. But life is full of surprises and challenges that can push us beyond our seeming capacity to roll with the changes. I don't suppose any of you have ever noticed that, but uh, I noticed it once or twice. It's good to pause, take a few deep breaths, and affirm again that we are being guided and instructed in ways that contribute to our greater good and well-being. See, one of the things we have to keep in mind about spiritual guidance it's never left us. And what is it? What exactly is spiritual guidance? So we are all supported by what I call the creative life force. Call it God, call it divine mind, call it whatever you want, your spiritual source. It's greater than our normal thinking. It's greater than just any one of us as an expression, or all of us together even. It's greater than all. It is the source of all. What is its number one desire? It's freedom of expression. And we know this is true because you look out across this earth life and there are so many forms of expression, they're countless. Science says it has not identified nearly all of the species that are existing on this planet even now. And that it seems difficult to believe because it seems like we have our nose every place. We've poked every place. We've looked every place. We've counted everything. We've weighed and measured and evaluated. But it's true that we haven't. But why does the infinite, why would the infinite continue to expand or want to expand through the manifest world? It's because there's no limits to what it is, and that's its nature. And so it touches this material plane. And we're in this material body, we're part of the material plane. But we are expressions of this infinite spirit. And so we share the same desire that it has. The reason for manifesting, the reason for being so prolific in how it expresses. That's us. And that's what Emma Curtis Hopkins is talking about. There's this expressive, expansive intelligence that is behind all of us. And that's pushing us into greater freedom, always. And when you really think about what is spiritual guidance, does it mean I need to get from point A to point B? Is it a place I need to be? Is it a thing I need to accomplish? Is it something that needs to be addressed by me? Or is it a greater state of freedom? And that thing represents that greater state of freedom. That's what we have to keep in mind is we're all being pushed, we're being fueled by the Holy Spirit, if you want to call it that, the whole Spirit. It's behind us, it's pushing through us. And so all guidance is through this material realm to places of greatest expression, where greatest, the greatest expression is possible. That's our greater good. That's why it's important for us to say when we're asking for something, when we're focused on some manifestation to say this or something better. We're thinking like spirit. Because spirit knows how to do this stuff that we are attempting to invoke. We don't ever invoke it. We simply cooperate with it. When we ask for guidance, what we're really doing is saying, I'm willing to be dropped into the process of greater expression, of greater expansion. And that will translate into anything you're doing. If you're having a relationship challenge, for example, there's a blockage of some kind. What Spirit is doing, the reason 
you feel uncomfortable in whatever it is you're doing is because there's a blockage and there needs to be an opening. And the only reason you feel the problem is because there's something in you that says there's greater freedom here and there's a way to accomplish it. And so guidance is allowing yourself to adjust to whatever that is, whatever that expression is. Sometimes it's further development of a relationship, sometimes it's letting it go. And if we trust that Spirit is moving us one step at a time in the best and highest way, we'll be open to whatever the answer is. It may not always be comfortable for us. That's the one of the problems. And I should say it won't be comfortable. It's not always comfortable initially. But ultimately we learn that it's the best and highest. It's the best and highest for all. But while it's all happening, while we're in the midst of the state of unknowing, that's when it's most difficult. That's the darkness before the dawn. And that's when it's uh, important to do what I'm talking about right now, is let go of all the appearances and remember what you were taught, remember what you know. Your unfolding greater good is also the greater good of those whose lives you touch. Embrace the truth that you're being shown the best and highest way. You can rest assured that the guiding hand of divine wisdom touches those around you as well. And again, that's not always easy to see because sometimes we don't make decisions because we're afraid we're going to hurt somebody or afraid we're going to make somebody angry or somebody's going to have a reaction. But if we listen to what we are, what's being, how we're feeling at the deepest level, then whatever happens in the outer, in the relationship with someone else is also for their highest good. If our intentions are the highest, if you just if you just set out to hurt somebody or whatever, which we don't do, uh, things don't work so well. Because when you hurt somebody, what you're saying is, I'm something that needs protection from that person, so I'm going to cut off whatever relationship I have with them or change it, try to force a change. It's kind of an interesting place to be, the human relationship scene. It's one of the most difficult things that we have to do because we don't always know when to hang on or when to let go. And that's why it's important to, to let go of the struggle that we're having long enough to touch base again with that feeling that whatever brought me here, that which brought me to this place, knows how to carry me through this. And to carry me through this means greater freedom for myself and it means greater freedom for the people or person that I'm dealing with or for the situation. And so I do it and, you know, if you take time to just sit down and reach a point in yourself where you find your center of power. I talk about that quite a bit. And you know you find it because you you know everything's okay from that, that center. You're getting back to that relationship with God, that oneness, that awareness of that which brought you to this place. So what we have been taught are some very simple principles, very basic ideas, and I think it's important for us to get back to these from time to time. I just rattle off a few in my thinking. First thing is don't judge by appearances. If you're involved in a struggle of some kind right now, watch how you're looking at it. What are you looking at? What are you responding to? And most of us would answer, I'm responding to appearances. I'm re responding to what, what appears to be true. What appears to be true may not be true at all. That's what's interesting about this whole thing. 
if you had the insight of God, if you had the whole mind of God looking at this situation, you wouldn't see a problem. You would see this as perhaps a temporary thing that needs to be worked out, but it is being worked out now. So that's the first very simple principle we've heard a million times. Don't judge by appearances. It comes from Jesus and many other people as well. The second thing is believe that you have received that which you ask for in prayer. We don't ask for guidance. We affirm that we're being guided. You see the difference. One is asking for something we don't have. And the other is stating that we do have it. And it's in effect right now. I am being guided. I don't ask for guidance. I affirm that I am being guided. Before, believe you've received that which you ask for in prayer. Lift your spiritual eyes to behold the fields ready now for harvest. In other words, focus on the answer rather than on the problem. And maybe you can't see the answer. Maybe you don't know exactly what the answer is. But in one way you do, because you just ask yourself the question, how would I feel if it was, this thing was resolved? And you say, I would feel free, I'd feel creative, I'd start thinking of other things. You know how you'd feel if this thing passed. So that's what you're looking for. It's not necessarily specific resolution, because what we're trying to achieve in every resolution is that feeling. And what is keeping that from me now, what's keeping from me from that now, is I'm so involved in the appearance. So I am to lift my spiritual eyes to behold the fields ready now for harvest, to see the finished product, the peace that comes from resolution. Allow myself to experience that and hold on to that. And to understand, number four, that your faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All these are principles out of the New Testament, but you find them in every religion. Your faith is the substance of things hoped for. The fact that you have faith in the solution, that's the substance of that thing, of that solution. The substance, the essence, the reality. When you worry, you exercise faith, and I'm talking to all of us, not just you. Worry is faith. And your faith is the substance of the thing you're worried about. And what happens when you go off on a mental tangent of worry is it destroys your current quality of life. But your faith is in the problem. Your faith is in a negative outcome. Or in a continued affirmation, I don't know what to do about this. If we keep saying that, then how can we possibly do anything? If we keep saying, I don't know what to do. My faith is turned on my own inadequacy. And that faith is the substance of the thing I'm affirming. It's the evidence of the thing I'm not seeing yet. But I am seeing the effect of that, the reality of that, or not the reality, but the effect of that in my experience. So these are simple ideas, and we've heard them a million times. And it's very important for us, I think, just to keep getting, getting back to basics. We try to delve deep into metaphysics and all the spiritual teachings and so forth, and there's really a handful of principles that we apply in any situation. And this uh, whole idea of guidance is one of them. But don't judge by appearances. Believe you've received the thing you asked for in prayer. Lift up your eyes. See beyond the current problem. And understand that this faculty of faith that you have, the way you're pointing it, the direction you're pointing it, is the substance 
of the thing you hope for. Let's make sure that what we're hoping for is what we really want. And maybe hope for is not the right or best word, but what we're focused on, where we're most focused, that's our faith. And so we just acknowledge that and say, that's not where I want my faith. I put my faith in the greater good that's unfolding now. The greatest fruit of prayer is the peace of mind that inspires in you the freedom to live your life creatively and confidently. The wisdom that brought you to this place in your life knows how to carry you forward. It knows how to impart the light of guidance that lights your path. Be at peace and trust that your life is now unfolding exactly as it should. Now that's not always an easy thing to do or remember, which is why it's important to talk about it from a place like this on occasion, just to remind ourselves that our life is truly moving forward, that it's in divine order. So if you've got something going on right now, I have a couple of things going on right now. It's kind of why I usually talk about what I need to talk about. And many of you will say, well, that's exactly what I needed to hear. So I guess we're kind of all on the same page. And I guess also what I keep coming back to is there's probably nothing we don't need to hear. <laughs> we need to hear it all. And we need to be reminded of it all. But this idea of guidance is happening now is a very important one to carry through this week. And if you've been all in a tizzy about something, just make a conscious decision that I'm going to stop pouring my energy into that thing. Have you ever noticed how a person can control you that may be 500 miles away? They can control your emotions. They can control the way you think. They can control your actions. That's kind of a scary thought that your worst enemy doesn't even have to be in the same room to have control over you. But the question is, do they really have control? Do they have the ability to make you think like you're thinking? Or do you have the control? Are you the one? That's all it comes down to. We just bring our power back into ourselves. And I know how easy it is to let somebody pull that trigger, you know, turn on that switch that makes us feel powerless. So it's just a simple thing of reminding ourselves that we're being guided at this very moment. Our life is unfolding in divine order and greater good is awaiting us. All right, so thanks for coming out and have a great week and a safe journey.
You've been watching a talk given by Reverend Doug Bator here at Independent Unity in beautiful Grand Junction, Colorado. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps us spread our message. If you would like to support us, you can do so by clicking the button in the right-hand corner of the video screen. We greatly appreciate your support. Thanks again for watching.